Hey, how do you think life first began? Some people think it started deep in the ocean. Others believe it was created by some higher being. And some even hypothesize that life started from outer space. What if, just maybe, the starting materials of life came from outer space, but instead of forming in the ocean, life started in hot springs? Shocking, I know. Life, even the simplest forms of life, are made up of complex proteins, which are long and complicated chains of amino acids stashed away in a barrier of lipids from the outside world. When we talk about the origin of life, at least from a chemical perspective, we are really discussing how we go from simple molecules like this to complex proteins, nucleic acids, and cell structures like this. We think that the starting materials, meaning the amino acids and lipids, came from outer space. No, really, we mean it. It is one potential way that these building blocks of life got introduced to the Earth in the first place. Here's why. In 1969, a meteorite as old as the solar system, about 4.6 billion years old, came smashing down over the village of Murchison in southern Australia. Interested to find out what secrets meteorites contain, Scientists at NASA Ames extracted samples of the meteorite and deciphered some of the chemicals within. As it turns out, it contains thousands of ancient organic compounds, including the amino acids and lipids, in large enough quantities, such that small bubble-like structures called vesicles form when astrobiologists like Professor Dave Deemer dissolve them in water. Of course we are not discounting the possibility that some of these organic compounds could have spontaneously formed on Earth over billions of years. But from the Murchison meteorite, we know for sure that the starting materials of life, at least to some extent, did come from outer space. With some of the starting materials and vesicles at hand, how do we get from amino acids and nucleic acids to peptides and DNA. Peptides and DNA are essentially long chains of amino acids and nucleic acids, respectively, formed progressively when individual units of these acids are energized and bond together. A simple wet and dry cycle, such as what can happen at the edge of a pond, which constantly gets wet and then dries back out again, has been demonstrated to sufficiently supply the energy required to create these bonds. Iterate multiple wet and dry cycles, and we have ourselves the foundation required for the simple amino acids and nucleic acids to bond repeatedly in order to form complex chains of peptides and DNA. The question, though, is, where on Earth can we get naturally occurring wet and dry cycles to happen? This is where researchers, Professor Dave Deemer and Dr. Bruce Damer, from the University of California at Santa Cruz, propose that hot springs, prevalent on Earth some 4 billion years ago, during what's known as the Hadean Eon, is where the earliest forms of life developed. Keep in mind that Earth, 4 billion years ago, is very much unlike Earth today. The continents had not yet formed, and any dry land that existed probably came in the form of volcanic islands, like Hawaii is today. The hot springs constantly alternate between wet and dry, supplying the energy required for peptide and DNA bonds to form. Additionally, as the cycle alternates, the vesicles are constantly created and destroyed, much like how soap bubbles form 
when wet, but then get destroyed when dry. The brilliance behind this proposition is that this constant creation and destruction of new vesicles allows different combinations of peptides and DNA to form over the many cycles. Over extended periods of time and countless cycles, it becomes realistic to imagine that by chance, some combination of these peptides or DNA start to give rise to unique properties and possible biological-like activity, such as reproduction. Eventually, this might lead to something called a protocell, which is a primitive type of cell that originally arose for the evolution of modern-day biological cells. Thus, the researchers hypothesize that these cycles of wet and dry could have originally initiated Darwinian evolution and eventually life as we know it today. And this is why Professor Deemer and Dr. Damer think life first began in hot springs. From simple amino acids and nucleic acids and lipids through countless cycles of wet and dry taking place at hot springs prevalent on Earth four billion years ago to complex chains of DNA and proteins formed within vesicles called protocells. The paper we covered in this video is titled The Hot Spring Hypothesis for an Origin of Life by Bruce Damer and David Deemer, published in the journal Astrobiology. Details of the paper can be found in the description below. And we encourage you to read the paper. Obviously, we can't cover the whole publication in a few minutes, but we hope you are intrigued enough to find out more.